Hello, I'm the Grub Street Lodger and I'm just coming to the end of my first day of 2021 and so I thought I'd look back on December's reading. I mean 2020 was well, obviously a strange year in general but a very strange year for my reading. I mean I read things that made me laugh, I read things that made me cry, I read things that inspired me, I read things that disgusted me and I read a lot of very weird books. I read one where the pages were all out of order I read another which every single story was translated into a different kind of English. And December carries on that theme a bit. So the first book was not a strange book particularly. It was Casanova by Ian Kelly and I read this for the uh, Samuel Johnson book group in which Ian Kelly was uh, part of the discussion. Though it was all on Zoom. But it was good. Uh, and yes, it's it's a discussion of Casanova. I've read... Ooh, say about a quarter of the complete uh, history of my life, the memoirs of Casanova. Um, so I, I didn't really, kn I knew how the story ended because I know where he ends up and I knew, you know, that first quarter, the bit in the middle I didn't know. And Ian Kelly is really, really good at selecting his material and he's really good at just giving it that fast pace. It's structured like a, a play with uh, five acts and then these things called intermezzos and that's when he gets to do an essay about a particular area rather than telling the story. So he'll talk about Casanova and sex. For example, Casanova did not have as many lovers as you'd think. I mean, he had 150 something, which you know, seems quite a lot. But Byron had that many in two years in Venice. This is Casanova's whole lifetime. And for Casanova, he says he loves each one. But maybe he does. Um, and he's he's serially monogamous his his love life is not completely unusual for a man of his type and time you know these kind of adventurers going around europe and stuff and the reason we have this this idea of casanova the lover is partly because when his memoirs which were not really written to be published did come into the public consciousness it was through selected sexy bits and this book puts into context of his whole larger life uh, as, as a mathematician, uh, as an occultist, um, as, as a traveller, as a food writer, which is apparently how the book began. It was all about Casanova and food, and then it became this biography of Casanova. And yes, it's very, very good. It, it gives you a really good sum up, and it's, it's very intense, because Casanova just spent his whole life, it seems, going to a new city and getting involved in very similar scrapes and then another city and another and another and it it's not repetitive and it's a very very good book I found it hard to get into because as I say I've read Casanova himself talk about the first sort of I think he's up to about 26 or 7 uh, so you know, it wasn't all completely new to me at the beginning so I took a bit of time to get into it but once I did I very much enjoyed it so that was the first book. I'm trying to be brief today. The second book was not this, because this is Ramona the Pest. Um, and I put it there as a little placeholder to remember it's a book called What Mona Wants, Mona Gets. And I picked it up and read it at school um, in, a, yeah, in about six minutes, I think, maybe ten. Uh, it's, it's a short book. It's very peculiar. It's got three individual stories that build up. It's about this kid called Mona who wants things. And she does moan. Uh, and the first one, she wants this necklace and she gets it. And the necklace ends up having magical powers to create the things she wants. And she ends up drowning in them. And in the end, she just wishes that she had what she had already. Uh, the main thing about this is Mona is one of the most dislikable protagonists I read all year. I did not like Mona. And her comeuppance was not strong enough for me. Uh, yeah, I, I read it, so I mention it. Next book, then. This is, this is an odd one. It's called Girls on the Run. It's by John Ashbery. It's a poem, um, and it's inspired by um, these pictures here. Uh, there's a guy whose name I've forgotten, but it's here, Henry Darger, or Henry Darger. And in fact, his own neighbours didn't know how to pronounce his second name because he was such a recluse. And he made this immense novel about these girls called the Vivian Girls. And um, it's all about them fighting in a civil war, and it gets very strange. Um, Ashby doesn't really tell that story. He looks at the pictures. He, he went to an exhibition of some of the works and these things are inspired by it. My description of this book, uh, when I wrote about it, 
uh, on Goodreads was that it's a bit like when I fall asleep and I just let sort of images come into my head and I let them wash over. You kind of have to do that with this. Um, there's a lot of stuff about time in it. Um, it's a lot about time and innocence um, and, and childhood and how time keeps going. I'll read a little bit just to give you a sense of the rhythms of it. Um, these were cloistered, they stayed with us that winter, then went on a while. Soon they were back. It was partially time to go out into the opening. Some enjoyed it. Then, if it were true, the blue rabbit heaped bones upon them. There was no going back. Now, though, some did go back. Those who did, didn't get very far. The others came out a little ahead, I think. I'm not sure. It's, it's very rambling. <laughs> but it was interesting rambling. I, you know, it's... 54 pages of rambling. I mean, I did that with Pickle for the Knowing Ones, but this is artful rambling. You know there's stuff going on behind it, but you don't always know what it is. Um, yeah, it was it was an experience, and I don't think I'll seek out a lot of John Ashbery in the future, because, I mean, I'm, I'm a neophyte to poetry, let alone dense, peculiar, surreal sort of, conscious you know um stream of consciousness poetry but as something different it was nice it was a little refresher i needed a little wash because then i came to this next book and um, this is gonna take me oh this is this next book this is the book uh it's in three volumes as you can see but you don't read it like that because the this is filled with short stories there are 101 short stories in this. It's by a man called uh, Robert Sherman. Sherman, sorry. It's called We All Hear Stories in the Dark. And what it is, is you read a story and you get to the end of it and you get, it's very lovely illustrated by the way, you get sort of options. And it says, you know, do you want to start with something sad, something funny, something bitter, something sweet or something dark? And so you sort of pick which of those you want to do. And it takes you to the next story. And so you're not reading it bit by bit. You're, you're jumping around all the time. Not only that, you're jumping around the volumes, which makes it a very awkward book to read at work. Or, I mean, I, I, do, I don't read on the bus anymore because I don't get the bus. But if I was, you know, you can't really take all these on. So you've either got to choose stories you know are going to be in that volume, which I think is cheating. So I chose... You know, a story that was in another volume and then just had to sit out the rest of the day, which is why I ended up reading that What Mona Wants Mona Gets, because I just wanted to read something. Uh, and I was waiting to get home to get to the next volume. So, yeah, you jump around all the time. And so unlike a normal book, you don't actually know how far you've got. You know, you, I read uh, 36 of the stories, of the 101 stories, and, um, yeah, I didn't know how many was left. And actually... At story 36, I got kicked out of the book. I've never been kicked out of a book before. But it led me to a story, which led me to another story, which then said, right, you're at the end now. And I thought, I'm not at the end. I've got you know, over half the stories to read. But I'd made my journey. And that's the point. It's all about making your journey through the stories. And, and it's fascinating. It's a really interesting way of reading, apart from anything else. It's really um, amazingly dumb. As for the stories themselves... I mean, I've never read 30-odd short stories in a row. I mean, I, I find short stories a little taxing, actually, because um, every few pages you've got to, oh, right, I've got to find out who these people are and what these people want. I, I like a novel because because you can spend a bit of time with them, but no, short stories, you, 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 always, got, you, know, you always got to start again. And it makes great use of that because none of the short stories are... Uh, calming. They're all unsettling in some way. Some are instantly unsettling. Some become more as it goes on. And uh, it was really exciting to see what the next one would be. And although there were some I preferred to others, they were all good. Like Robert Sherman is a very, very good short story writer. Um, I discovered about this book when he interviewed him on Stewbag Fall uh, website. I'll put a link to that. Um, and I'm going to come back to this because I'm, I want to read the stories I haven't read. So one day, uh, maybe even this year, uh, December, it's good for December. It just feels december -y. I might have another go. Now, there is a secret route through the book. 
and I think I know what it is. I think I've found it. Um, I think anyone who's been kicked out might have found it, but I could follow that route, but then am I following my pleasures and my inclinations to find my stories in my order? So I might go back and, you know, not, you know, not follow the cheat route, follow my own wishes and inclinations and just have it in my head. Oh yeah, don't go to that story yet. Cause that's the one that leads you out the book. <laughs> but this is, it's, it's astounding actually. It's, it's such a, it's it's not just the format, um, it's the content. He wrote this uh, when his parents were dying uh, and died, because it took him 10 years to write it. And there's a lot of stuff here about uh, relations with parents and relationship with children and uh, uh, grief uh, and, and love. And it it's, touches an awful lot of deep, profound things. And it made me laugh a great many times. And it made me go, ugh, a few times. And it made me, it just, it just reminded me how much I love books and how much I love fiction and, and reading and just the whole, the whole journey of it. And, and this encapsulates that journey in a way that uh, nothing else ever has. Uh, and I, I, you know, it's, it cost £45 for all of these, uh, but my goodness, is it worth it? I, I got 45 quid's worth of pleasure out of the 30-odd stories I, I read. And I still have like 70-odd stories to read if my maths is any good. And and yeah, and, and even when I read it again, I'm going to reread the stories I've read when I get to them. Because the point is, they'll be different, won't they? Because one, I'll have read many other things in between. But, but two, they'll be in a different context with the ones I've read before. And yeah, this is... It's incredible. Um, yeah, best book of the month, obviously. Uh, then finally, I feel a bit sorry for this book. This is The Tenant of Wildfell Hall. And I, I read it because I, I, I plan over this year to catch up on Bronte's and Austin's I've missed. Um, in fact, it, by the looks of my planning, it's going to be quite a female-heavy uh, year in terms of reading. Uh, and I don't normally plan either. I don't know what I decided right. I'm going to plan some of what I'm going to read. Um, the reason I feel sorry for it is because when I started it, I absolutely loved it. She really sketches out the, this family of Markham and, and his uh, little bratty sister, uh, little bratty brother and his sister and his mum. And then this mystery of this, this, this widow and her daughter who live in Wildfell Hall. Then when I got to the end of his section... Uh, outside things happened, namely uh, the announcement about going into Tier 4 in London, changes to Christmas plans and things like that. And that sort of put me off. You know, that, that, that took away my concentration at about the time the book was changing gear. So I found it really hard to get into the next section, which is the section everyone likes, which is all about uh, Helen, who is the tenant, um, her story and how she got to where she is and it was very good but my mind was not ready for it you know, my, I just wasn't concentrated enough and uh, I found it very hard uh, in a way that <laughs> had that not happened I probably would rate this as one of the best books of the year um, one of the best books of the month is definitely but below uh, Real Histories in the Dark I think uh, that's, that's a compliment um, but because my mind wasn't in it, I didn't get get into it and get that pleasure and that uh, interest that I think it deserves and deserved. So this is one that I probably will revisit one day uh, and get that. So then we have her bit, and then we go back to Markham for the last bit, and that just felt faffy. <laughs> and Markham, who had been really interested in the beginning, now seemed like a whiny crybaby, and I couldn't... Was that because of the change? Was I think that was because Helen is so strong that when we went back to him, he looked bad um, in retrospect. But I don't know uh, why. So Tenant and Wildfell Hall. I was going to say this was my favourite Bronte when I started it. Uh, but now it's, it's below Jane Eyre for me because um, Jane Eyre, again, actually has that weird third thing with Sinjin and everything. But that, that that's, that's very good. And, and then um, 
Wuthering Heights, which is just peculiar. This is a lot more subdued, and I think it's probably a better book for that. Certainly um, a more grown-up book, you could say, uh, for that. But with, with all the the upset and the what's going on and what we're doing and am I really going to spend Christmas by myself and all of this kind of stuff, I couldn't. I couldn't give it what it deserved, so it's good, but I, I, I just couldn't, um, I just couldn't give it that. <laughs> so yeah, I've tried to get through this as quick as possible because, um, well, it's late and I've made a few too many long book videos. <laughs> I hope the new year is going to be brilliant. I hope it's going to be brilliant for you. I hope it's going to be brilliant for me, and I'm sure it's going to be brilliant for the things I've read because. Uh, good looking to be read to be read to be read pile down there so uh from me happy new year Maybe I need you too.